Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Hoven, your host of the Difference Makers podcast. This is a place where people come together that are making a difference for those who want to make a difference. And that's you. We're bringing thought leaders together in a sense of fusion where ideas and concepts and personalities are all driven together into one place at one time. And this is no different. In this episode, you're going to see cool things from cool people making a difference. Hey, Difference Makers, great to have you back for another episode of the show. And today, I'm going to spend some time talking about something that I'm really passionate about, and I've really been putting a lot of time into recently into a new version of this particular item. Now, what is it, you ask, that I'm so connected to and committed to and passionate about right now? It's all about personal development on one side, but team development and productivity on another. So let me explain. There are things out there that a lot of us have taken in the corporate world. They're called personality profiles or personality tests. And there's a whole bunch of them. One is the DISC profile. One is strength finders. uh, One is the Enneagram, which is a little different version of it. There's tons of these things out there. And they're really interesting self-awareness tools that you go through a series of questions, you answer the questions, and then it gives you a report. And some of these reports, it's insane how incredibly accurate they are like it's literally you fill out the information and you get back a written description of you looking in the mirror of yourself now there's some caveats to these tests and basically here they are number one you have to answer them honestly you can't answer the questions how you wish you were or how you thought you were it's it's it takes self-awareness in order to answer the questions in such a way that you get accurate information back the other caveat is you have to know the context of how you're answering the question. Some of these tests are designed to be specifically work-related tests. Some of them are designed for how you parent or uh, other relationships. So understanding the framework of how you answer the question will give you potentially slightly different answers in how these profiles work. But overall, man, of the ones that I've been doing, I've been doing these for probably 15 years. And the one that I was most familiar with was the DISC test which gave us uh, the elements of how much of a driver we were and how interpersonal and how much we were a team player versus a detail player, you know, these kinds of things. And so I've really been into all these things and taken these tests to look at them and see where it applies in my life and how we can make teams better. Well, here at Ramos Law, over the last, oh, it's probably been a year and a half we started working, just dipping our toe into something called the Working Genius Profile. And the Working Genius Profile is something that was developed by Patrick Lencioni and his team. And uh, Patrick has written a number of really great books on the concept of work, but he writes them in fable form so that he takes working concepts, business concepts, and he puts them in the form of a non-true or a fictional story. And then you get the messages of how these concepts work so that you can grab them at a very, very easy level and then apply them in your own life. Now, this concept of the working genius came from them talking about how they were working together and where some of the stresses and struggles were in how they were developing their business with their team. So they started trying to figure out a new language, a new set of terms that they could talk about. And as it came up for them, it was literally game-changing so that now they have an entire portion um, of their time that's not with their normal group called the table group, and it is strictly about the working genius. And so how this got brought into our world is Dr. Ramos was looking for something before a leadership meeting where he said, hey, I'd really like to get my team together, and I want us to find some common ground as what types of strengths we have and how it applies to the different roles that we play within the business. So there were, I think, five of us in that meeting, and he found this thing, and it really resonated with him, the working genius. And so he had us before the meeting all take the test. And at the end of the day, you answer the questions, you get this report, and the report kicks out six working geniuses. So there are six total, and everybody, according to the model and the paradigm, has two that are predominantly working geniuses, two that are working competencies, In other words, you're good in this area, but being there too long is going to bring you some fatigue and it's not where you get the most fulfillment enjoyment out of your work. And then the third category of two is your working frustrations. 
Now, if you're working in your working frustrations, the problem with that, of course, is you're frustrated. So it doesn't mean you can't be really good at whatever is in your working frustrations, but if you're there for very long a time, that's the, the category that can lead to burnout, can lead to frustration, can lead to job change, or just also not being a great team member if you're expected to do things in your working frustration. Now, on the opposite side of that is if we're working in our working geniuses, that's where magic happens. So I'm gonna go through the geniuses, tell you a little bit more about them, tell, them how, tell you how we've used them, and hopefully give you some ideas on how you might wanna look into some sort of personality profile and even look into the, the Lencioni working genius model. So here's the geniuses. The first one, and, and by the way, there's an acronym that these create. It's called Widget, okay? So Widget, W-I-D-G-E-T. And so the first genius, we'll go through them in order, is the genius of wonder. And wonder, I want you to think of it as that person that can ponder and think about what could be, what's missing, what's completed. Why do things work the way they work? And I'm gonna give you the Lencioni official description here and I'll read it for you so that it kind of ties what I just shared with you together. It says, it's the natural gift of pondering the possibility of greater potential and opportunity in a given situation. People with this genius are constantly curious and on the lookout for what could be improved. Does that sound like you? Are you that person that when you're just sitting there for a moment, looking at a problem, whether it's at work or in an organization you might be with or in some other setting, that you're like, why do we do this this way? And what could we do here? And how could we make this better? And how could we leverage our resources? If that's you, you probably have the gift of wonder as one of your strengths. The next one in our widget model is the, uh, sorry, is the uh, gift of invention. It can also be thought of as innovation, but the, the actual word is invention. And invention is that person who's like the engineer or the guy or gal that really gets the steps going. So let's say the wonder says, I wonder how we could solve this problem. The inventor is going to say, oh, this is how we solve it. We could bring these people in and we can get these resources behind us and we can structure it this way and this would be the training for it. And this is how we would get the word out. All those things are the skills of the inventor. And Patrick and his team describe the invention as the natural gift of creating original and novel ideas and solutions. People who have it love to generate new ideas and solutions to problems and are comfortable coming up with something out of nothing. Does that sound like you? Are you that person that says, oh yeah, I know how we can do this? If so, it might just be that invention is one of your superpowers. The next one is, this one's really, really big. It's the gift of discernment. And discernment is that ability to, not because of experience and wisdom, but rather because of instinct and natural gifts, being able to say, if there were two or three or four choices on the table, this one or these two would be our best bet. Even if you're not really familiar with the topic, if you don't have a lot of topic expertise, there's something about you that allows you to look into a situation and say, this is the right direction, this is the right move, this is the right play, that is the gift of discernment. And here's how the Lencioni team describes it. Discernment is the natural gift of intuitively and instinctively evaluating ideas and situations. People with this type of genius have a natural ability when it comes to evaluating or assessing a given idea or situation and providing guidance. Those sometimes can be like the, almost the, the mama or papa influences in a, uh, in a situation where they just seem to, or that wise uncle, they always seem to have the right thing to say at the right time and really help people kind of know where to go and give direction on how things should be done in order to get the best result. That is the gift of discernment. The next one is the G in the widget model, and it is the galvanizer. If someone has the ability to galvanize, they're that person, just like the term sounds, it's bringing people together behind getting behind the vision, being kind of the wind in the sails of once the vision has been cast, once the direction has been set, once we have the steps in place that have gone through the inventing process and we've decided which way we're gonna go, now the galvanizer is that person and has that gift to bring everybody together, to get the energy flowing and to be the disruptor in the group. So as the project gets going, 
sometimes momentum will start to lapse or wane. The galvanizer is the person that comes along and says, no, 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 no. How's this going? Where are we at? Are we hitting our deadlines? Are we doing this? Are we doing that? And always keeping that energy up and getting the flow and the movement of the project, the process, uh, the relationship, whatever, it keeps that going. So galvanizing, very, very big, important part of the widget model. And here's how it's defined. Galvanizing is the natural gift of rallying, inspiring, and organizing others to take action. People who have it enjoy bringing energy and movement to an idea or decision. Next, we move to enablement. Enablement. Now, enablement in this context is not a negative thing. We always think of enablement as, oh man, we're enabling this person and it's commonly associated with people who have a problem, right? It might be an addiction of some sort or it might be someone who just can't get moving because they're enabled. That is not what this is. In fact, uh, the Lencioni team has a podcast called The Working Genius Podcast. Amazing, amazing. And uh, they talk about an episode called Rebranding Enablement. In other words, they, they have a, a desire and a hope to take that term and give it a whole new definition, a whole new paradigm. And the enabler in this case is a positive person that is essentially like the the one who comes alongside. It's it, You might be considered it as someone who's like the glue on the team where they'll come alongside and help out in any way they can on any process, even if it's not in their skill set, even if it's not in their top priority. If someone needs help, the enabler is the one that's gonna go give them the help or help find the help and push things along to make sure that the team is moving forward together. And here's how it's defined in the genius model. Enablement is the natural gift of providing encouragement and assistance for an idea or project. People with this type of genius are quick to respond to the needs of others by offering their cooperation and help with a project, program, or effort. And the final element of the widget model is the T, and that stands for tenacity. And tenacity, just like it sounds, is that ability to get things across the finish line, to get things done, to meet deadlines, to hit quotas, that's the tenacious one. If you're that person that just says, hey, once I get the thing, once I, once I know what I'm supposed to do, I'm like a pit bull and I grab onto it and I don't let go until it's done. That's tenaciousness. And every project needs this, right? Every team needs some kind of tenacity in order to get things going. So let's define tenacity according to the model. It goes like this. Tenacity is the natural gift of pushing project, projects or tasks to completion to achieve results. People who have this genius push for required standards of excellence and live to see the impact of their work. It would also say they love to see the impact of their work. So they live for that and they love that. So imagine, if you would, how it, it or well, hopefully you don't have to imagine, hopefully you can see that it takes all these geniuses to get something off the ground if you're starting from scratch. So let's just say that you want to um, start some sort of little league team for your, one of your kids or someone that you love that you want to start a baseball team. And you say, okay, what has to be done on the baseball team? Why would we want to do a baseball team? Do you have any kids on the baseball team? Um, is it, and like you say, is it your friends or your family's kids or your kids? And where, where should you put it and what should it do? All that is in the stage of wonder. So not only do you have personalities that have these um, these traits, these widget traits, but every project is going to go through this entire widget process. So that's why matching talent with where you are in the process makes really, really good sense. So if we go back to our baseball analogy, we're wondering where are we going to get this from? How are we going to get the money? What do we really need the team? What's going on? And so then we go into invention, the invention phase of the project. Now we have to say, what city should we go to? Okay, we know that we want to go to city X. We'll call it Johnsonville. And in Johnsonville, we know that there's already a team here and a team here and a team here. So I have to go find the application, find out where the teams are, find out where the practices would be, um, figure out who the list of kids, how are we gonna get a list of kids to put on the team? That's gonna be the invention phase of the project. Next, we would need to go to the discernment phase. And the discernment phase is gonna say, is this really a good idea in the first place? So we wonder about it, we figure out what it would take to get it done, and then we say, Number one, is this a great idea? And if so, why? What's the impact that it makes? How does it change the world? How does it change these kids' lives, et cetera, et cetera? And once we get to that, then it's saying, okay, we talked about three places within the city it could go. Which one has the closest um, location to where all the kids would be? 
and which one would be uh, likely have the the uh, best fields that we could use for practice and for games. So we have to discern what's the best way to go about the process. So now we've got a plan. We've decided what the, that the plan is, right? Now we, it's time to move on it. This is where the galvanizing takes place. So someone's going to come in and they're going to say, all right, for the parents we have that are volunteering, the people that are coaching, for the, the fields that we're going to be using, for the kids that we're going to be have, having to, to coach and invest our time and our lives with, now it's time to bring this all together and get it moving. These galvanizers, they're incredible for starting things, getting the momentum going, and they're also, their job is to make sure that as the winds of momentum start to die down, that they're always on what's most important. They know what it is, and then they can go to those team members and to those processes and say, okay, where are we at? How's it going? And they disrupt, and they disrupt, and they disrupt in the most positive way to keep things going. So now the baseball team is set. It's up and running. Now, what do we do? Now we need to get the, um, the enabler in. And so the enablers are the ones that make sure that we have all the equipment and that the coaches are connecting with the kids and showing them at practice uh, that this is how we want to do these things. This is our standard and this is what's going on. And here's how you hit and here's how you catch. Oh, and parents, we need to make sure that we have orange slices for the games at, after the games and Gatorade. And oh, here's what we're going to have the team party. Let's go ahead and get all that done. They just come along aside whatever needs to be done and they help the team be successful. The coaches will also fall a lot into the enablers of certain types of coaches that are not the ones that are yelling and blah, 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 but the ones that are going, hey, I believe in you. Here we go. You can do this. You're going to get better next time. Oh, great job on that. Those are the enablers. And then you've got the tenacity people. The tenacity people are those coaches that say, here's how we're going to do it. It's going to be like this. We're going to check the boxes. You're going to hit um, 20. You're going to try 20 at bats every single practice, and you're going to field 20 fly balls, and you're going to field 20 ground balls. Bang, bang, bang. They're going to follow through and make sure all of this stuff gets done. And then you have the tenacity on the administration side where they're going to say, here's our schedule. Here's how the team vans work. Here's where the orange slices get put out. They're going to make sure all of that gets done. So hopefully that silly little example is a way that you could see that every project has a widget format to go from onset to completion, but also every project that has those needs for completion needs teammates that has those skill sets, either in their, preferably in their working geniuses, but if, if you don't have that working genius, maybe in your working competency to get each of those things done. You don't want the person who's a wonderer having to do all the tenacious details unless their top two geniuses are wonder and tenacity. In that case, they can wonder on one side and be tenacious on the other. But if they're a, like, for example, here's my, my two geniuses. My two geniuses are number one, enablement. In other words, bringing people alongside to make sure that the vision goes good and that they're happy and that they have what they need and that we keep things going and galvanizing. So I'm the rally guy. I'm the energy guy. I'm the make sure that we get this done. Now, interestingly enough to me, those pairings go really, really great and natural together for me. But you know what my working frustrations are? My working frustrations are tenacity and wonder. So don't ask me to be the guy to come up with the idea and just go, oh, man, that's, I'm just going to think about that. Like, you know, I wonder if space is infinitely expanding or if it's completely set. I don't know. But you know what? I don't spend much time thinking about it. It's just not in my wheelhouse to put a lot of time into. And the more I do, the more it kind of fries my brain, which would be put it into a frustration. Same thing with tenacity. I've known for a long time, well before I started uh, learning about the working genius model, that I can get things going, but the details, I need people around me to pick up the details and make sure that those things get taken care of. So I'm kind of the big picture guy. And when it comes to all the details, man, I just I can just fall apart, especially the longer the time goes where I have to focus on the details. It's brutal. You can ask my wife if it comes to who has to, you know, make sure that all little account things are going right and all the books are right and all the bills are paid at the right time. Whew, that's rugged, rugged for me. Could I do it in a pinch? I could do it, but too much of that. And, and it saps my energy. It saps my passion really, really quickly. So Understanding your working genius, your working competency, and your working frustrations can go so far in not only the example like we talked about where we're taking a project to completion, but think about it this way. 
if you are in some sort of, of work environment where it's not just you, so you don't just work from home on a computer, working with the, the internet to do what you do, if you're part of a team of any size, wouldn't it be great to understand the strengths of your teammates, number one, where they're in their genius, and number two, their frustrations. See, a lot of people wanna know the strengths so that, oh, we can get this done together, but if you don't also understand the frustrations, it can lead to a lot of misunderstandings. Here's a great example. We have someone on our team that I dearly love, dearly love, and I have many, many times asked this person, hey, can you do this, 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 this? I just give them the big direction, and I say go. And because they're a great teammate, they say, yeah, yeah, I absolutely can do that. And then I've come back time and time again, and the things that I've asked to do aren't done in the timeline that I would have expected. And now, so first of all, I need to understand how, as the leader in this relationship, how I didn't give clear enough instructions, clear enough deadlines, clear enough insights, uh, ask questions, keep it accountable at a quick enough tempo. Like there's plenty that I could have done to make these types of situations better. But when it happens again and again and again, and then I get frustrated because I'm like, I asked you to do it. You didn't say anything. It's still not done. And the other person's frustrated saying, I don't know why I can't this get this done. And there becomes this sense of disappointment and, and almost guilt or shame on their part for not being able to get it done. We take the test. You know what? This person's tenacity is very low on the scale, very low. So if I don't know that his frustration is in um, tenacity and I'm asking him to do tenacious work, it's a it's absolutely a uh, it, it's set up for failure. And we don't want to do that to our team. So imagine yourself understanding in your teams what your geniuses are and what your frustrations are. And then the competencies in the middle, you can work in those for a long time. But again, the more we could stay to our genius, the better off we'll be. Now, here's a, a cautionary statement about this whole model. It would be very easy for people to say, you know, um, I only want to work in my genius or to take the other aspect, to take no personal accountability and say, well, that's in my frustration. So if I don't do well, that's why. Uh, in some cases, if you're hired to do a job and that job requires being in your frustrations while you have that job, you need, to, you need to own that part of the job and frustrations. But here's, as I've been thinking through this, and I've been spending the last few weeks really diving into this and trying to apply it to my, my life and to our team, that if you're gonna be in your frustration, it helps so much to identify and know I'm gonna be in my frustration and tell the people that the project or the assignment involved are involved with that assignment or project, tell them, I'm gonna be in my frustration. So here's what I need. Number one, I need a little bit of grace because it's going to take me a little bit of time and this is not in my wheelhouse to do this. But here's number two, I'm going to lock myself down and I'm going to give myself 30, 60, 90 minutes, whatever it takes. And then I know I'm putting myself in my zone for blank. So for me, let's just say I'm responsible for figuring out a way to get a project done, which actually just came to me uh, last night, late in the night, Dr. Ramos said, Hey, Dr. Hoven, I would really like for you to do this. And I'm like, okay, it's going to take some wonder on my part to pull this thing off, right? And But it's it's what I've been asked to do. So now I know that just because it's in my working frustration, I don't say, well, I'm going to find someone else to do it. It's been tasked to me. So then I'm going to spend some time in wonder. But it's going to be blocked time where I go in my, you know, my, my sweet spot and I pick a, a place where no one else can get to me. And I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to wonder about this. Let me then wonder and invent. And it just so happens invention is in my competency zone. So first I'll wonder, wonder it through, then I'll invent it out. And then I will start doing my natural skill set, which is enabling and galvanizing behind it. You see how that works? So this does not absolve us from all personal accountability, but instead it allows us to have a, a vocabulary that we can talk about together in our teams on whether it be projects or things that we're doing individually so that now the expectations can be set appropriately and we can all enjoy the process of work together. So as we wrap this up, here's the thing. When it comes to taking any of these tests, take them for what they're worth. And it doesn't mean it defines who you are. You can't ever break out of, of these things. But if you answer them honestly, they, they do tell you so much 
about yourself. And the working genius, again, I, I'm just a big fan of it right now. I'm already seeing the impact just over the last few weeks of how it's affected our team, how I communicate with them. And here would be a nice little test. So we've defined the six geniuses for you. Go back and watch these. Look at what the geniuses are and just guess based on who you are, what sounds most like you, which two sound most like you. That's a great start. I just did this exercise with our Colorado Springs team where we went down there, uh, our, our head of culture and myself went down there and we said this, we said, look at, um, here's the model. And before we give you the test, let's just see what these things look like for you. And so these, the team members all answered based on how they thought they were, what two, um, two elements they were, what two geniuses they had. And then what we did, which was really fun, is we gave them scenarios and we said, okay, what if you had someone come in that said this? This was their particular issue. And we asked someone whose working genius was um, in each of the categories when their working genius was that, how would they handle it? And what we got to see was that someone who had the working genius of wonder in a situation that required a ton of tenacity, they really struggled on how they would handle it. And it, they could handle it okay, but not in the same way that someone whose predominant gift was tenacity would handle it. So we got to see how each other would interact in different situations. And that opened up a lot of avenues for communication, for team building, and for bonding. So as an exercise for you, I'd recommend that you uh, that you, number one, just take a guess at it. But number two, I'd recommend that you go take the test. It's like $25. You can go to the Working Genius. And I don't know if it's workinggenius.com or whatever, but if you if you just Google Working Genius Test or take Working Genius, you'll be able to find the link to that and do that. And then for the key people on any team that you're on, especially the ones that have the most influence on making decisions, I would start there if you can't have everybody take it. So start on the people that have the most impact and work your way out so that now you have abilities to communicate. So that is what I've been learning and totally pumped about in The Working Genius. I hope it's been something that has been at least thought provoking for you. And uh, if so, please let me know. I'd love to hear more questions that you might have, more thoughts. If you've tried it, if it's been something that's had impact on you, how has it? Let me know so that I can take that to our teams and help them get, um, get better at what they do while I get better at what I do. And if you've liked this, please, if you would do me the biggest favor, I would humbly ask that you subscribe and that you share and that you like and you forward and you do all these amazing things because it lets us know that we're having an impact on the world, that we are making a difference just like you're making a difference. So uh, if, by the way, any other things that you'd like us to talk about or share or explore and then put on camera for you and, and uh, get out to you, please tell me. You can email me, jim at ramoslaw.com. I'm here for you. I thank you so much for spending the time with me today. And until we meet again next time, keep making a difference. 